I declare to you right now in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. That God himself and not another has anointed you. And God himself and not another has raised you up, said the Spirit of God, to take this church into new realms, into new places, places that she has never been here to before, said the Lord. For the ministry that I've given to you, said the Lord, has been birthed by the Holy Spirit. And even when you did not know it, said God, I knew you and knew my plan and my purpose concerning your life. For it is I, said the Lord, who now give unto you wisdom and understanding of the things which you shall do and the things which you must do, said the Spirit of God, in order to bring this church to the place that I've called her to. No one understands, said God, that there is a set destiny for this house, a set purpose for this house, said the Lord. And I shall make this house great, said God. And I shall cause this house to arise, said the Lord. And my glory shall rest upon the people who dwell and worship within this house, saith the Spirit of the living God. Now, my son, be not afraid. Be not dismayed. Be not discouraged. See, I have set before you a light. See, I have set before you, said the Lord, wisdom. I've set before you knowledge. I've set before you, said the Lord, understanding. As you embrace it, saith God, shall I not cause you to wax strong? Shall I not cause you to wax in understanding? Shall I cause you to arise, saith the Lord, and begin to move into realms of revelation, understanding of my word, my will, and my plan, such as you have never known, saith God? For the anointing that you now partake of, the anointing that now rests upon you, saith the Lord, it has been this way before, and it knows every turn, it knows every corner, it understands the valleys, it understands the mountains, it understands the seasons, saith the Lord. Now I brought you under an anointing that can teach you, one that will instruct you, saith the Spirit of the Lord. And even now I release upon you, saith God, a fresh fire. And a fresh passion for your zeal shall not die, but your zeal shall only increase. Your zeal shall not quiver, but it shall always be strengthened, saith the Lord. For I will strengthen thee from the inner to the outer, and you shall know your God. You shall understand your God, for I have set a revelation of perception within your spirit, saith the Lord. And if you allow that which I'm teaching you now and causing you to understand, to be birthed within you in all its fullness, saith the Lord, shall I not cause you to arise? And this day I declare to you, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. I declare that every enemy that gathers against you in judgment I will condemn, saith the Lord. Bless the Lord, Valley Kingdom Ministries, good having you in the house this morning. I hope that you are doing fine, you're doing well. I pray that you had a blessed week and it, it was a fruitful one. And I know it is a fruitful one because God is on our side. I pray that as you come this morning and as you are in the right spirit, remember you have to be in the spirit of God to receive from God. And if you're not in that right spirit, I pray now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you would arise and let the glory of the Lord shine upon you, that your life now can come into what God is going to speak, what God is going to say, what God is going to declare, what God is going to direct, what he is going to do right now. I pray that you will open up your spirit man to receive. That is the power grid on the earth whereby the kingdom of heaven can make connection with you on the earth. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will do this. It is your duty as a son, a daughter, a worshiper of the Most High God to be in position and be ready in position to receive what the Heavenly Father would have for you even in this day of worship. And God, I want to say thank you. Bless your people. Even as we gather today, it's the first Sunday of the sixth month of this year, 2020, God, and you have been faithful. So we continue to give ourselves to your faithfulness as you continue to unfold yourself unto us. And we thank you for every day's opportunity you have given us that we will know you. We will know you by purpose. We will know you by divine will. We will know you by the providence, the things you have set for us to come into and then understand after. 
but we will know you. And I pray that every one of us will set our lives every single day to know you more, oh God. And we want to say thank you. Bless the feeding trough of the word of God today, almighty God, that as we eat, we will be strengthened for purpose. We shall not speak outside the alignment of the accuracy of your word, the integrity of your word, O oh God, the DNA of your word. But God, we'll align our thinking, we align our lives, we align our desires, we align our emotions, we align everything in according to your word, God. We shall not shift to the left, neither the right. For those who need blinders, Father, put blinders on for your own good, Father, because they are easily distracted. For those of us who have given ourselves to maturity, God will remove the blinders and we can't be loose and we will not be distracted. But God, save your people, Father. Save your people. And God, I want to say thank you that you are the Savior of the world and you continue to showcase who you are as you reconcile the world back to yourself. Use all of us who have made ourselves available and have joined you in the work of reconciliation. And we thank you for doing this and working this in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. So, Valley Kingdom Ministry family and friends and those of you who are viewing, we want to thank God for every single one of you this morning that are uh, in the spirit and you arrive here to receive the word of the Lord. Do not take what is happening, do not take what has happened for granted because surely Romans 8.20 tells us that God works all things out for good to them. He loves and those who are called according to his purpose. That is not just a sweet sounding word that we rehearse and we speak whenever we feel like this is the reality of the power of Almighty God that he continues to display every single day. And so we are still learning this thing about God. We are still learning God. Even though we think we know all about God, let me tell us this. We haven't begun to learn all yet about him. There's so much more about God to be learned, but we learn in part and he displays himself in part because he cannot display the whole of his glory towards us we will die if you think i'm lying go back to when moses asked to see and what he told moses and so it's very important for us to understand this so today we're going to be around the lord's table too we're going to be breaking bread and we're going to be drinking from the fruit of the vine this first sunday and i pray that you have kept your bread i pray that you have kept the fruit of the vine i pray that you're in the right spirit and you're ready to have that fellowship as God would have you to have that fellowship this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so this morning, I want to continue to share about that faithful conscience. We are dealing with a grade of integrity right now. And integrity is, the, is, is I want to say, the hallmark right now that the world needs. The world needs integrity right now. Many outbreaks of all sorts of different things are happening. And the hearts of men are being revealed. The hearts of women are being revealed. The hearts of our children are being revealed. And so it is important for us to understand that the power of integrity is being challenged in our lives right now. Every single one of us. But we need to know how am I doing? How am I doing? How is this, how is integrity doing in my life? We must ask ourselves this question. How how is integrity doing in my life? We could also ask, how is wisdom doing in my life? How is understanding doing in my life? How is care doing in my life? And so it's important we ask ourselves these pertinent questions. But right now, the question to ask is, how integrity is doing in my life? Am I yielding to the power of integrity? Or am I allowing my selfishness with pride to rule and, and dominate and construct all sorts of different construction for the safety and welfare of the being of my life. And so it's important for us that we hold fast to what the spirit of the living God would have for us to eat. At Valley Kingdom Ministry and at large, I know the spirit of the Lord is going to be challenging and laying this same, this same principle of integrity in the lives of his people. From leadership come right on down to those who are feeding from the trough that comes from the altar and so this morning I want to just share a little more from where we were on Wednesday and I pray that it has been a blessing to your life 
I pray that it would have been challenging your life to come up higher. I pray that it would have been challenging your life that even in many different instances that changes has already begun to be made in your life and you can feel it, you can see it, and you are loving it. Are you with me? And so let's get on down to the Word of God for this morning. And so give me a 45 minutes. It's going to be short because we also have to hit in the loop of having the Lord's Supper. Know that as uh, soon that the, the, the areas of, um, of worship is going to be open, we're going to be briefing you a little more about that because everyone is listening up for when they say it's open. But I need for us to understand that even though when it is open, you're not coming back to the same. And since you're not coming back to the same, it is very important for us to understand I must prepare myself. On Wednesday, I told you, go before God and ask God to prepare you for when you come. Because when you come, it's not going to be the same. The way how we used to relate, we won't be able to directly relate like that. And so, fellowshipping in the house of God or the houses of God is not going to be the same way. So I want you to emotionally, mentally, and psychologically right now prepare yourself to understand and integrate into your system without fussing, complaining, neither fighting. It's very important. Not fussing, complaining, neither fighting of the changes that would be required laid upon the houses of God. Not only here, the houses of God that we be in compliance to what the governing power of our land would have laid down for us. Are you with me? And so I don't want the houses of God to be rebellious against what the, uh, the authorities of our land are literally laying down for the safety of the lives of all of us. Amen? So I'm just briefing Valley Kingdom Ministries and all of you else who are viewing us, listen, we're supposed to uphold the word of the Lord even through the governing power. Once it is nothing against our God, we got to uphold it. It's very important. Amen? Now, let's, 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 let's get to the word of the Lord this morning, and we're going to look at a few things as God would permit us and God would have it to be. So turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 40. Genesis chapter 40. Turn to Genesis chapter 40 with me. And I shared a lot on Wednesday. I hope you were blessed with that. And um, we're going to look at a, at a few things a little bit more. Hallelujah. God is good. God is very well good. He is good. Now, so, on Wednesday I shared with us whereby God is working out your escape. The escape is not going to be an instantaneous escape for Joseph. His home was not instantaneous. Bam. If it were to be instantaneous, then Joseph would have had to be killed. Because that would have had to be the judgment that to be placed upon his life. But that was not the judgment. The judgment was he would go to prison for that of where he was falsely accused of rape. Now, God works together all things for good to them he loves and those he called to purpose. Now, we need to understand that Joseph's life is purpose. All that Joseph went through is purpose. And we need to understand this purpose in itself. And in this purpose in itself, it's important for us to understand that we need to allow God's will to work. I'm, I'm, I'm going to share some sticky points today. But stay with me a little bit on this. The baker and the cup bearer in destiny needed to meet Joseph. Hello somebody. I shared about that whereby the meeting of people and some people in your life, God orchestrates things. And I want all believers to remember you give your life to God. And since you give your life to God, you need and I need to always remember God is in control. Now that's a cliche. That's one of the nice phrases that we like to use. God is in control. But when we finish say God is in control, now we're trying to work the answer out. 
Let me tell us this. You cannot claim God is in control and you're trying to work the answers out. If God is in control, then you're waiting for the answer from God. Some of you might be saying, well, I don't see the logic in that. This is not about logic. This is about faith in the integrity of God's word, what God said. When it comes to God working out things, your natural mind will, will never catch in which dimension God is going to work it out. So you can't afford to use the power of logic first. Until God speaks, then would he now allow you to use your human faculties now to work with him. Before that, your human faculties cannot be used to fathom God. Hello, somebody. If you think I'm kidding, go read the whole book of Job and you would realize that Job's three friends, friends tried to use human faculties to fathom God and God said they distort wisdom. Pray for them because I'm going to deal with them. It's something that we need to understand. Because from the time you are a person that, like, that, 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 that listen, sees about you, it's hard to trust God to see about you. And all I'm trying to say is that the formula of God is simply this. I work all things together. We don't have the ability, neither the capacity to work the all together. You might say, but well, come on, man of God, that don't sound fair. Listen to me. If right now you are in a situation like Joseph, you tell me the formula to come out of the prison. You tell me the formula. Give me the formula to come out of the prison. Give me the formula to erase where someone just falsely accused you and is held. It is written in the books and they have already sentenced you to life in prison. Tell me who going to get you out. How would that work? All you could do is say, but I didn't do it, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. And that's all you could say. But who is going to get you out? That is why when you're walking by faith, understand I need to hear from God and then I apply my human given faculties to the word of God are we getting this this morning when we get that then you will not be tired you will not be weary neither would you be worn let me give you another example we all know as Bible scholars every one of us are a scholar in our own rights that when God called Abraham, he began to speak to Abraham about being a father of many nations. He didn't say, I'm going to make you a father of a family. No, he said, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. And it's like, look at the impossibilities based on the promise statement that God have just spoke on to Abraham. And he says, I'll make you a father of many nations. And Abraham cannot have a child. Now you tell me. With all the scholarship degrees you have and understanding that you got, how could this word of God come to pass? How can it come to pass? Let me know how. Then the only way it could come to pass is once Abraham bring his human faculties into compliance to the word of God. What God is going to speak. God is going to direct his life. And so, since God is going to direct his life, he must be in constant fellowship with God, not going with what was the last state of his life before he met God. He needed to remove the statement of the last move of himself into the now move of God's word of integrity. I hope we're getting this today. Lo and behold, the word of the Lord came to pass. He brought a son to him, not Ishmael, two sons he had, Ishmael, Ishmael came, we all know how Ishmael came. Let's talk about Isaac, the promised one, based on what God has spoken. And at a particular junction, God said to Abraham, bring Isaac up to me and sacrifice him. Now can you tell me how Abraham going to work that one out? After all this, you give me a son, now you're about to take the son away from me. How could this be? When he was going up the hill, the son was not a 12-year-old, not a 10-year-old. He was a teenager. Could have been 15, 16, or 17, somewhere around there. And he began to ask 
His father, an intelligent question. It was not a childish question, an intelligent question. It's an, it's an intelligent question because I believe he would have seen his father in worship before his God. And he asked him the simple question as they were walking up the hill. Dad, I see the sticks. Dad, I see the flame. I see the triple matches and whatever it is. But what I'm not seeing is the sacrifice. What was Abraham's answer to his son? A simple answer. The Lord shall provide a lamb for himself. Listen to me. Do you know the depth of that? God is not going to ask for that level of sacrifice until you first learn how to get rid of all the human faculties that have kept you for all over the years. Surrender it to the word call of God. And as you begin to grow in that grace and in the knowledge of God, he will ask many things of you. Because he knows you are ready. You will walk in obedience. You can't afford to use what you have laid down. It, 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 it is dead. I don't know what is the answer, but the only answer is God is going to provide because he have learned to see God provide where he was unable to provide. I know I'm talking to somebody right now because there's a matter and there's a case that is pending and is pressing right now. And where you were able to do with your own strength and your own power, it seems as though I'm helpless. But can I give you a word of encouragement? You are in a good move because there is a supernatural move. There's a wisdom of God upon of oh God that is about to be revealed towards your life that is going to magnify God in a place where you stood in the way of the magnification of the hand of God working on your behalf and I'm talking to you this morning that that which it seems to be hard to give up he is saying give it up put it on the altar don't be afraid put it on the altar let God be God put it on the altar Trust the hand of God. Hmm. Some of you might be asking, how do I do that? I don't know what it means that my hand's not in it to know that it is going to be done. You see, that's the problem when you live by sight and not by faith. Because I just give the formula. The formula is I humble myself under the mighty hand of God first. Secondly, I got to take my instruction steps. Because God already told me that my steps have already been ordered. So I got to wait until the servant of grace brings the steps that I need to take to me. And then I apply myself to the order that God have just brought. A lot of us get in the formulas right because we are trying to mingle what is of heaven with what is of earth. But we need to understand what is flesh is flesh and what is spirit is spirit. And flesh has to come in conformity to the greater power that is the spirit. And so this morning, I'm challenging us. You might be saying, well, hey, let's talk about Joseph. I am talking about Joseph this morning, but I'm broadening the scope because some of us might think, hey, it's only Joseph. Hey, you got to understand the formula of God works right through. It doesn't matter who it is. That's why I'm bringing other folks in place because you might think this person got some kind of nice stuff with God and I don't. I need you and I to understand this, that when it comes to God, it's a fear, fear, playing field. And if you should follow what God says, then the result that God said that will come to you it will come to you it has nothing to do with the color of your skin the color of your eyes the texture of your hair where you're living and what language you're speaking it's time for us to put these things down understand that when you apply yourself onto the call of God the will of God the purposes of God how God uses your life integrity that is the key and until we begin to take God at the level of the 100% purity of the integrity of his word, then all the shadows are going to dissipate. It's going to begin to move away from us. We have too many shadows in our lives. Too many shadows in our lives. Too many shadows in our lives. Let me tell us this, y'all. We got to make this confession right and this profession right as it ought to be. Because if we are faith walkers, then we got to be 
faith flesh us of the word of the Lord because you cannot be a faith walker and you're not fleshing the word out are you with me I did not say flush I said flesh because the word must become flesh the word must dwell amongst men that's the only way man could behold the glory of God the same way how it was in Jesus he said now I give you one that could do the same thing in you so don't get angry with me this morning but I want us to move from this place where we are stuck. Get up. Let the glory of the Lord shine upon for too long, too many excuses. I've heard it as a minister, excuse after excuse after excuse, when God already said, you can do. I heard that verse come out of the best mouth of all of us. I can do all things through Christ. And as soon as we finish it up, we start to speak a different language. Let me tell you what that says before my very eyes. You are speaking things you don't know of. And let me tell us where that is written. Right there in the book of Matthew where he met the woman at the well. And she began to want to pick up the worship talk with him. And Jesus had to let her know that you all worship stuff you all don't understand. And can I tell us, yes, you're in the house of God. Yes, you give your life to the Lord. Yes, you can re rehearse your scripture. But your steps in walking, what you're rehearsing. And until your steps come in alignment, then I know that the word has been digested into your system. That it alter your soul. And your soul is surrendered to the power of the spirit of the living God that when you step the earth shakes and tremble yes y'all those are the formulas just don't come with words because we have been admonished not just may hear us may hear us could, could, could tell you back what they heard but he says do us and when you become a doer then you become a miracle worker Some of you are still fasting and praying and asking God, I want the gift of miracles. Foolishness. Foolishness. Do you know what it means that you just break your last loaf to help the next neighbor have a meal? And when you slice in your loaf, your loaf is not finishing. That's a miracle. Come on, your simple, basic, precious of life. God says, I give you I give you an empowerment to bring about use the pressure to bring it about use the pressure to bring it about use the pressure to bring it about but of course there's another formula that rubs us and that is sight sight rubs us you all but faith want to bless us can I say it again sight rubs us but faith want to bless us. Can I say faith is not blind, y'all? <laughs> Somebody need this word today, you know, because I'm giving you the structure that, that, that God is going to give you the understanding. And when you stand to your feet, he is going to give you the order steps. Now, what you're going to have to do. And, and listen to me. God don't give the order steps outside of that which you carry. And anything you don't have, he is going to now bring somebody in your pathway that is going to connect with you for a season of time. That is where destiny paths cross. You all getting this, y'all? I hope you all are. Because from me to you, all of us need this formula right now. Because a lot of you who hear me saying, God, you got to open up some other door for me to live. And God said, all doors are open, but you ain't seeing none. If you open up my word, the door is open. If you pursue understanding, the door is open. Oh, come on. You say, but I don't understand. That's the problem. If you don't understand, all I could say to every single was, one of us who don't understand it, when it's time for feeding, you better get yourself ready in the spirit and say, I need to hear more. Be a student. <laughs> don't become a teacher before your time. Humble yourself until the teacher sign the certificate and then assign you. Oh, come on. Don't be prideful, man of God. I'm not being prideful, haughty, puffed up, none of those things. These are the principles in the word of the Lord. And all I'm sharing is the principal things with you. Listen to how Paul wrote about his spiritual son, Timothy. 
when he had reached that place, remember there was a time he said, now Timothy, go, I want you to stir this gift up. Remember hands were laid upon you, impartation took place inside of you, but you went dead and dormant. You let this thing go down, but I come back into your life not to stir it back up. And he said, now stir the gifts up inside of you. And then he started giving him instruction about doing the work of an evangelist and so forth, which is he is sending him for. But then there was a period now where Paul is about to depart and Paul was pouring his life out like a drink offering but 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 for his son Timothy he said Timothy the things I have entrusted to you now I want you to entrust it to faithful men as you have been found faithful with me you see that's the problem ministers I hope for whoever minister here in this I want to encourage you I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you today. And I want to encourage congregation because there are those that right now desire many positions, but you have not been found faithful even with a little. You want to stand in positions where folks can see and applaud because it looks nice. But I need for everyone to understand the stage is not where you win, dear Grammy. The stage is where you receive the Grammy Award. Do you know where you win your Grammy? It's when you're on the set every single day. And every line that you have to read and give back out, you have to give it back out on the set. Risking your life and doing whatever they tell you to do. To make their movie great on your merit of your name. But it's on the stage you receive your Grammy. What am I saying to us today? All I'm saying to us today is when you give yourself to homework behind the scene, that is what causes you to receive your degrees in public. That's all I can say to us today, y'all. And I want us to get this. So when he told Timothy, faithful man, is because Timothy was found to be a faithful man. So he would know what to look for. Man of God. Women of God, leaders in houses, see faithfulness in people. Faithfulness is not just about voluntary acts. Faithfulness is the character of long-suffering, patience, and endurance. If they are not willing <laughs> to die with you, they ain't willing to walk with you. They're not worthy, sorry, to walk with you. If you work in 10 hours, they got to say I'm with you 10 hours if you're not complaining they should not be complaining either know the signs of faithfulness please know how to test it before you sign your name and make this person whosoever because as soon as they sign your name and make them when you're not around they're going to lord it over the people and destroy your ministry you all hear me good now let's get down to Joseph no, you're all saying, where is Joseph? Well, Joseph is coming again. The baker and the cup bearer in destiny needed to meet Joseph. He was able to hear their dreams and interpret their dreams. As I looked at it over again, I realized that Joseph had matured. Maturity showcases itself. And it tells where you were that you are not there anymore by how you relate in your now. Woo. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. When you speak, when you move, when you behave, can it tell your then that you have matured to your now? If it can't, then you are in your now, but you have not matured from your death. You got to know how to do this, y'all. When Joseph began to receive the dream, he was young. He was childish. He was boyish. So he began to speak with an airiness for what he had seen. But the funny thing about it is that it is not recorded until later on, but early o'clock, that God had given him any interpretation. God just gave him the dream. So he carried his future in a dream form. Because God speaks in parts, and at times he speaks the whole. But for 
Joseph's life, he gave him the dream. Two parts of the dream. And in both parts of the dream, it showed that Joseph would arise to a high place. How would this work itself out? We don't know. I don't know. But I got the dream. The Bible did not record when he was with his, in his father's house with his brothers and so forth that God gave him the interpretation. No. Because everyone was still skeptical, asking him questions about, are you trying to tell us? And he could not speak with the affirmative. So then, what am I saying? Why, why am I saying all of this? Joseph has matured through hardship. God had to forge character for the gift. Hello, somebody. Gifting and abilities are very good. But gifting and abilities without character is going to destroy. If the first person is the carrier of the gifting and the abilities, and the second set is going to be the whole world wherever you are found without character. I want you to hold this real good because it doesn't matter, matter if you believe in God or not. It's a principle from the word of God. Gifts and ability are excellent. God give it. But it is limited because of the limitation of the level of character to uphold it. Hello somebody. Let me ask us a question. How far do you think your gifting and ability can take you? How far? How far? Many of us would say very far because I see. I would say I agree with you. But we could go back in the history line and we could see when the world trade went down. There are those who couldn't see again and they killed themselves with their gifts and ability. Why? Why? If you have gifting and ability, why kill yourself? Because they couldn't see thus far where their gifting and ability have produced them. But if they had the character to uphold the gifting, then inside of the set of tools of character, then they should have one call. You know what? I could start all over again. It might take a little time. They call that endurance. It's going to be a little tough. Call that perseverance. All these are characters to uphold that you have to use now your giftings and abilities with these powers beneath it. Because you're going to use it, but there would be no pleasure in using it when you remember the seasons of pleasure using it. Oh. God had to build character in Joseph. He was young. As how many of us are young. I am young. Don't you dare say I'm old. That is an indictment to the power of the Holy Ghost of youthfulness. <laughs> now listen to me good. <laughs> all of you who are young, all my young people, whether in this house or the houses of God, how are you doing with judging your integrity. Because I have a word for you from the word of God. And it says, youthfulness is fleeting. Eh? So if you think you would always be a youth, I got a word for you. Youthfulness is fleeting. But while you are young, serve the Lord. Because the time is coming. When you will be challenged not to serve the Lord. Then as young as you are, start to work on the grid of integrity. Don't you dare let the world fool you with gifts and abilities without character. That is why when one has gifts and ability and talents that is just, they got it natural. They just have nasty attitudes. Nasty behaviors. They figure they could rule the world, do whatever they want. But I got news for those types too. God is going to judge you. And as mighty as you think you are, like Nebuchadnezzar, you are eye man and an eye woman, so you only have eye marks and eye packs and all kind of eyes. He's going to put you down low. 
and let you look back up again. You will have to know who he is because he humbles the mighty yeah? and he exalts the humble. These are his principles. And whichever way you want it, try God. Not me. Don't, don't try me. I am God. I am Jesus. I am Holy Ghost. But all three is backing me up. And all three want to back you up. But if you want to try any one of them, I said go ahead. But I could tell you the answer already. You're going to lose. You're going to be flat on your back. You're going to be looking up. And the Spirit will be whispering, glorify Him now. Give God praise now. But your mouth don't want to give God no praise because you want to be God. You want to be a God on the earth. Listen to me. There's only one Father. There's only one Lord. There's only one God. There's only one Spirit of all. And anytime you want to go outside of that formula, you and God are going to dance the tango and they're going to make you out because you can't dance with God. Get in this? Let's go to Joseph. The baker, the cup bearer, got their dreams. Cleared up, interpreted, that's the word. Joseph learned to interpret dreams because God did not initially give him the interpretation. But God withheld that, that God is going to school him by seeking him. It was just yesterday that I was encouraging a brother in the Lord, one of the sons here. I said, sometimes this is what God does. For those of us who are seers, those of us who are dreamers, whatever gift and ability that you have from God that, that has to do with God, it is very important for you to understand this. The Bible says that God shows in parts. Have you ever asked why? He shows it back. Let me tell you why. Because the answer is no, you have not asked why. It's not that we cannot contain it. That is what we have preached. But we too have seen in part, so we preach only in part. But now let's add on to the to some more to the parts how we have seen it. God shows in part because he wants us to pursue for the rest. <laughs> He shows in part, and it would reveal to you and I how much of this which we desire, we want to have from him. That's why he said, come taste and see that I'm good. You want to just remain a taster or living in what is good? So he give you a part, a portion. Let me see if you truly want this. If you dream, do you want the gift of interpretation? If you speak in tongues, do you want the gift of interpretation? I have not yet met anyone of all you tongue speaking believers that talk in your 10,000 tongues. I have not, not a problem with it because I understand the scripture of God it edify only you. So that is for your inside prayer closet. That is for you to get a boost and a charge from God. But if you have a congregation, Apostle Paul says it's better you speak two words than they could understand and be edified. Who would interpret? I have not heard any one of you say right now before God that I would become an interpreter. That's why there are utterances in powerful meetings and it's somebody outside that you don't know. When the one that God will get utterance and they're in tongues but they don't have interpretation. Not all tongues is for your edification. There are tongues that is to edify the masses that he has brought you before. And nobody including you has said, God, I need to learn how to interpret. I just want to say we are lazy children of God. We don't want to learn the whole structure of the kingdom of God. And until we start to sin like that, and God put things in part, it's for us to pursue. So I began to share with this young man. And I said, the next time, the next time, listen to me good, the next time, ask him to show you more. Don't settle with just this little portion here. That is just a taste and see I'm calling you. But now that I have, now that you're coming into to know it's a call, then you have to perfect this thing that God has given you. A lot of us 
us have not given ourselves to perfecting anything God has given us. You're stuck. You're not excelling. As Apostle Paul said, hey, you're all excelling giving, you're all excelling this. He said, no, I want you to excel in speech. Being able to excel. Graduating yourself. And don't tell me I need to go to Bible school. You do not need to go to Bible school. This is something of your own self, pursuance, sharpening. You want to get on top of your game. So you don't sit down and play games all day. You seek out those who are sharper than you and they're going to become the file because you are seeking the sharpening. And you sit and even if you don't understand, remain in the class. Soon understanding will come. It's because they're so high, you can't read up there yet, but they're going to pull you up. I believe that when Joseph went down into that pit, he alone in darkness was saying, God, what meaning this dream? How could this be? And I'm in a pit. Hmm. And God would begin to build character. Character is not built with pleasure. Character built with discomfort, with pain, adversities. I know you all don't want this message, but I'm sorry. That is the way of God. And until we understand we have fallen and we have worked judgment in our own life, then God has to work with the judgment for to bring us back into. And until we understand the formula, what we have done from the very beginning, our first father, Adam, understand God is bringing us from by the sweat of your brow, you eat, to the place of now, attend on to what I've blessed you with. Oh, come on, somebody. What I have blessed you with. And until we realize, I got to sit beneath God and I got to hear from him, you know. But you see, the problem is we're anxious for everything and we have been admonished. Don't be anxious for a single thing. And he told us what to do. When anxiety is trying to move you, he gave you two things that will keep you still. Prayer and supplication. Letting your requests continually be made unto the Lord. Because anxiety is going to mess with your psyche. And it's going to cause you not to lean on the power of your own ownership. When you are no longer and have the deeds and rights of ownership of your life, God has the deed of ownership over all of us. So it's a God, I hope you hear me today. I hope you hear me today. We got to give God back his deed because some of us are runaway slaves. Runaway servants, y'all. We have abandoned the Father's field. <laughs> we ain't working there no more. No, I don't, no, don't want to hear about no Jesus stuff. I'm doing me now. And that's, and, and, and that's the going word now where I do it me now. It's my time to do me. Listen to me. You do you, you're going to get COVID. You don't get COVID, do what the government said. You all are with me? Yeah. This is no season to be rebellious, rebellious against authority. This is a season that we learn how to adhere to authority. And if this is so worldwide in the earth, I wonder, uh, what about the kingdom of God? You all think it's anything different? It's a sign, you all. It's a sign. And until we start to understand as it is in heaven, let it be so on the earth, you better understand where judgment begins first. In the house of Almighty God. Then it spreads into the world. And if the authorities have to guide us, then I pray the church begin to understand we got to fix our ears now on the authorities God has set over our lives. I'm not begging you, neither am I asking you. But God has demanded, commanded, and decreed already, that's his way. If you don't want to believe it, that's your faith, that's okay. You and God are going to dance the tango, all right? But I'm telling you, who's, who will get show up, and that's you. So let's move on a little bit. I know time gone, Wednesday's coming, and I'm going to share a lot about this Joseph stuff. Because I eat it up, y'all. Now, the cup bearer, in fact, before I go to them, I want to just show again the growth of Joseph. 
in Mr. Potiphar's house, there was no word that says Joseph had dreams to interpret. So the only gifting that was at work that brought him into favor with the house of Mr. Potiphar was administration. Understand what I'm saying, right? For the house, the favor of God on the boy's life took the gift of administration and magnified it with the virtues of integrity that Mr. Potiphar saw that God is with this boy, how he administers. You see, he brought the gift of administration riding on the virtue, not only of integrity, but of care and concern for his master's welfare. Joseph didn't ask for no increase of salary, neither did he ask for a position, neither did he ask for no more bread. He didn't use it for conditional change. He gave it freely. And the Bible says, when you give freely, it shall be given back to you. And we don't believe these things because we say there's a price for everything. Yes, there is. But you see, we who walk by faith, the Lord that says, so first. So first. It's a kingdom principle because God the Father sold his son. And then the harvest came to the kingdom. Gentile world, hear what I'm saying. Gentile world, hear what I'm saying. The Jewish world, no giving before us. We are now learning giving the sacrificial way. They know giving through sacrificing. It's part of the culture and upbringing. It's not part of ours. And the religious bodies right now have, 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 have literally fed us a set of corn curls and snacks. That's why we're not spiritually strong. That's why when, when they start asking for, we don't have. We're not strong, we are children. Children don't work, adults do. <laughs> Jesus. I hope we're getting this and we really want to mature now and say God has sent me to become a man of God and a true woman of God. That my hands when it stretch out is not to take you know. My hands when it stretch out is to give back God. My hands when it stretch it must be open, empty before you. But when it stretch out before man, it must have goodies. I gotta mature God. I gotta mature. I have to mature. Joseph at that time. In Mr. Potiphar's house, administrated what was needed to be administrated because the gift of administration is not just, it, it is not set in no one area. The gift of administration can be applied in many different areas because there's a high level of discernment that goes with the gift of administration. This person is able to see into things and then find solution as they see. They're not seeing just the problem. There are those who have the gift of administration to find the problem, but they never excel into fixing the problem. And it's important that if you have that gift, say, God, I need the next step now. The next step now is to get solution. Because the person whom I call you know they have a problem, but they're calling you because they want a solution. They want an answer. And so it's important for every one of us that we develop our lives that we be answers to people's problems because the answer for sin is God's redemption. So God gave the answer, which is his son. If we are born of the son, then we are answers to many in the world. But are we going to see ourselves like this? And until we begin to see ourselves like this, then most likely we have gifted just to see there's a problem but then that's, that's all you're going to do? Listen to me. If Joseph had it only on that first phase, then I am telling you he would have been of no help to Mr. Potiphar. But he had it to the second phase. I know the answer. I am the answer. And I work the answer. And he didn't say all those things to be in the good books. 
I'm a servant, I'm grateful, I'm thankful, I have a place, I have to work, whatever it is, I'm grateful and thankful, but I have this gift that I could give. And you know what he did? He just gave his gift. In giving his gift freely, the opportunity now for all that he could have demanded had now come to him. Let me close by saying this. And it's a wisdom move, huh? I'm closing with this. Wednesday coming out, share more. Remember when God called Solomon to be king? And Solomon prayed? Solomon prayed was God give me wisdom to rule your people right. God says to Solomon in reply, because you were not, you were not like the other kings that would have asked for riches and for wealth and for houses and for horses and all these things, I will grant you the wisdom, but I will grant you all these other things. Is that not a principle of God? Mm -hmm. Why you want to serve God? Mm -hmm. Why? We got to ask ourselves the whys of many things we want to do, the whys of many things in them. Because some of those things, we might have to ex off and say that was all in me being selfish. And it had nothing to do with God. I just pulled God in so that it could make my heart feel nice. But at the core of it all, I ain't think I wanted God in. And I want to tell us, you need God in everything. And the test of your heart is simply this, eh? God says, all first things belong to me. So you told God, when I, this is what I do first. And, and you did, I first came, and you did not. Then your heart was just revealed. God was not the center of it. It was all why who you. Are you willing to forsake that way today? Are you willing to allow the grid of integrity to let your steps and your words be in proper line? Hell or high water, I'll come running through the rain because I told you today I gotta meet with you. You ready for integrity to work miracles? Because it does. <laughs> it does. And if you trust the uprightness and God drawing to anyone with that level of integrity and of uprightness, God has worked miracles for them. Because you are keep off your way. You're not going to go back. You ask God for the strength, you ask God for the ability, but you present yourself because you release that word. God, once he released that word, he said, I watch over and I perform. And understand that that's why he said, don't be quick to speak. Don't be quick to make rash decisions. Don't be quick. He talked about being quick. And he said, if you do, you have to fulfill it at the end of the day. The Bible have held those who have done this and the cost that it cost them. Remember, um, Jabez, I believe, is, is it Jabez and his daughter? I believe so. Jabez or Jephthah? Which one of them? Jephthah, okay, Jephthah. Jephthah and his daughter, and he make a rasta for the first person to meet him was his daughter, one and only. That was it. And so it's very important that when we're in high spirit, don't be drunk with being in high spirit. They call it being glad, but being a fool at the same time. Don't set yourself up. Amen, sins of God? Y'all, I'm finishing. I'm just letting it flow to you right now. I'm just letting it flow to you right now. Because some of you all need the runoff, some of you all don't, but some of you all need the runoff for me to just talk through some stuff because you gotta walk through some stuff because what has happened to the world have altered every life. And every life, some streams have been damned, called, I have, I, I, I am unemployed now. Now, what is gonna happen to the means of supply? Listen to me, listen to me. Your supplier is God. The workplace was the station, the conduit where it will flow through. I want you to consider when God says, have you considered the lily in the field? Have you considered the birds of the air? Have you considered the ant? I want you to look in your Bible and look at those three considerations to consider. And all of them speaks about God's power to provide. 
that all I'm saying is sit before God and say, God, show me. I humble myself before you. Don't say you don't have, because I'll send you to Elisha, to the wife of the prophet who died, and the predators were coming to get her two sons, and maybe standards and courts, and the bank is about to come. But the servant of the Lord passed through your region. Don't say you don't have, and don't curse what you have by calling it little and insufficient. Hey. That tells me your faith in God ain't where it's supposed to be as much as your hallelujahs have been. I heard you. Everybody sang, my hallelujah belongs to you. Uh-huh. Let's prove that he got the hallelujah. See, when nothing happens, it's easy to sing that song. But when it's that it happen, you know those songs that go far, far away? I have no songs to sing. That's when it's supposed to come up. And you know who's supposed to raise it up? The Holy Ghost. Hello, somebody. It's you I'm talking to. And God is waiting on you. Wednesday, be in the spirit. I have much to share. That in adversity, God is working on character. Wait for God's timing. Wait for God's timing. There's a timing. Wait for God's timing. Wait for God's timing. Wait for God's timing. Wait for God's timing. Amen. God bless all of you. Now we're going to go around the Lord's table. We need to go around the Lord's table and we're going to go around the Lord's table. Take your time now and go get your bread and go get the fruit of the vine because we're going around the Lord's table right now. We're going to eat and we're going to drink. Bless the Lord. <laughs> yes. So I believe we had a good month last month. Last month was what? May? In June. Yeah. Good month. Just now I'll be seeing some of you. Just now some of you will be seeing me. We'll have a good time. We'll have a good time. Service can't run for no two, three hours again, you know. Sorry. Service is going to drop down now. The service is going to be like an hour or so, some kind of thing like that. One hour. Some of you saying, but what kind of service is that? Listen to me. It will be the kind that is like a booster. When you're coming, so the anointing will hit you, pa -pa, like that. You're fully charged and you're going back out. Let another set come inside. You see, if we begin to say, God, this is what we desire in the confines that have been given, we are going to be obedient, God, but it does not restrict your power. And I want us to begin to understand this because God is breaking this mold of religiosity upon our lives. I mean, he is breaking and I'm enjoying the breaking of this thing. Because we have been too, too religious that we become so lost, so far away from Jesus Christ. And all it takes is just one moment in the right timing of God. And you step into the atmosphere of the limitation. And as you hit the door, you say I'm healed. And God said, that's what I told you. So what so what you figure? Man of God had to come and labor with you and pour oil all on your head. Listen to me. I'm looking for such a manifestation of God in this time right now that right in the seats that are spaced out. I just point in like this. Woof, 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 and seeing people just saying yes. If you believe with me, I'm telling you, when you come, that's what you're going to be, be receive because it's your faith that makes you whole. I have the faith to know what God is doing. Do you have the faith to believe that when I come, it shall be done to me? And in fact, you don't need to come. You can stay right there too, because I'll be sending it to you. And you say, yes, I want to receive it too. And you shall receive it. So get your bread and get your cup out. I'm just giving you some time. I pray that you have been in that place of prayer, washing with the word of the Lord of the soul. But now as we gather, you do not want your life on the earth to be stuffed out in no temporal way. You do not want the, uh, the will of the Lord not to be fulfilled in your life. You do not want to get sicknesses that has to do with your sin, that you keep practicing, rehearsing, and going back to. You don't want these things. Because he said, once you eat and you drink like that, and you're not discerning this thing right, you bring damnation onto yourself. There are different levels and types of damnation that will come upon the lives of the children of God. Don't you dare say, oh, God is love. Oh, he was love in the wilderness too. 
and he has never changed from being love. But he has to judge, and he is also a judge. And since he is also a judge, I want us to understand that if you continue, your judgment is going to come upon you. Nobody did that but you. So I'm telling us, child, children of God, stop sinning. Stop sinning. Stop sinning. Stop sinning. It's time to stop it. If you think you can eat and drink and continue tomorrow or later, remember, remember what the word of the Lord says. It will come upon you. And right now, many things are coming upon you quicker than the days before. Try and live right before God. Walk up, uprightly and live humbly before your God and before men. So get your bread out. Get your bread out. Bless the Lord. Sorry, all this looks so gold inside of that plate there. I ain't see the bread. <laughs> you all, it look gold to before my eye. I'm eating a golden bread right now. Eh? <laughs> so you all better know it's special. And I'm not sharing any with you all. You got your own bread. All right? <laughs> so you all, hold this bread up. And as you hold this bread up, listen to me. Eh? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I came down from heaven. I have come down to you on the earth. What we need is the very manifestation of the power of the redeeming work of Jesus Christ right now to redeem and rebuild. Because he said, I am the bread of life. Bread speaks about sustenance, you all. It speaks about sustenance. And what the world needs is sustenance right now. What the economy needs is sustenance right now. What, 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 what all of us need is to be sustained. Jesus said, I am your sustainer. I am your bread. I want you as you eat. You see, God, and God knows where you are. God knows the dilemmas in your life. But God is also the supplier of bread. I want you as you eat, believe your God. As he did for Israel in the wilderness, he supplied for their needs. And he knows what we are in need of. Stop worrying right now. So we cancel the works and the power of fear that brings in worry and doubt. And we call in the very spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. We're going to walk out of this greater with the silver and the gold. Because we're coming out, because God is repositioning. I want you, as you eat, you bless God. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us eat. Now let's lift the cup. And all I want to do is thank God for the redeeming work of His Son, Jesus Christ, the salvation, whereby we can have a living hope. <clears throat> we can hope in the Lord. We know that our houses don't have to carry the cries that are in other houses because we hope in God. We feast on the Lamb. We eat His Word because the Word is Himself. And every time I allow the word to be digested in my system to give me strength to walk by faith, then I'm being redeemed. In all my ways, I'm acknowledging the Lord. He said he will direct my path. The path of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow. I could hold to what God has said. In the, in the midst of all what is being said, whose report are we going to believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Today, as you drink, the Father has provided what we need in His Son, Jesus. 
And I am telling us, if you have never hoped in Jesus before, and if you have and you have fallen away, come back to hope in Jesus. Don't say there is no hope and no good. Trust in Jesus. You have believed a lie. Hope thou in Jesus today. Let us drink. Bless the Lord. Now, hallelujah. <clears throat> hallelujah. Just for a few announcements now. I really want to thank all of you for being part of this this morning. I want to thank God for the life that he has given to all of you in the month of May for the whole year already but for the month of May coming into the month of June we got some birthday folks <clears throat> so we got some birthday folks today and Hadassah Favec today's your birthday Happy birthday to you, darling. I pray that you enjoy your birthday today. I know your mom, I know that your brother, your brothers and they gonna celebrate you and stuff. But as you get older, remember, give that life more to the Lord, grow in his grace and in his knowledge. Allow him to bless your life every single day as a teenager, all right? I hope you have been tuning in to Minister Rickon on a Friday as a team that is current, all right? It is very important that you learn that. Some good stuff to be learned at that time. Also, we have <clears throat> Thursday the 11th, <clears throat> we have Candice Douglas, we have Gail Taylor, our Gail, and we have Shania Lamette. And we want to bless God for these three ladies. Their birthday is coming on up, in, on Thursday coming on up here. God blessing upon all of your lives, and I pray again, you spend this day before God and spend this day with the family, those who will give themselves to celebrate in your life that God has chosen, the time he has chosen to birth you, and surely there's a time when he is going to call you back home. Until that time, just remember there's purpose and destiny for your life. See that as your life crosses with other persons' life, your life must be lived out to be a blessing, not a curse. Never a curse to nobody. If it has, ask them to forgive you because that is not the will of God for your life to be a curse to nobody else's life. Amen? And also, <clears throat> we have Friday the 12th, going to be Christian Rollins' uh, birthday. So, Mr. Christian, your birthday is coming up, son. I pray that you too going to spend that time with the Lord, renewing all things in God, and let God renew all things in you, son. Know that God loves you, and I want you to search God out for his love. Search God out for his love, Christian. Search God out for his love. You cannot find, <clears throat> and you may be disappointed <clears throat> with the love of God amongst men. But can I tell us, all men, and can I tell you, all men are still in search of that love too. So you're going to get some distortion, perversion, uh, in, uh, inconsistencies, and so forth. But I want you to go to the source. God is love. And his son is the personification of that love that came to the earth to showcase the love of the Father onto humanity. Amen? So I want that for every single one of us at the end of the day. So God blessing on all those who are going to be celebrating their birthdays in the month of June. Now, the Root Project continues again, and I'm inviting all women, all right, um, to be part of this, which is Sunday the 7th, which is today, Sunday the 7th, and also Thursday the 11th of June, which is 6 p.m. Remember, it is coming up, coming up again, <clears throat> and they are dealing with com communication skills and also self-confidence, 
and Elder and Gail Elder Cummings is going to be the feature speaker that is going to be dealing with that segment. So please, we have it up there. Take all the information. Be part of this. Be part of this. It's being a blessing to those who are tuning into it. Those who want to be blessed will be blessed. Those who choose not to be blessed, that's your choice. But I know, and I want to thank God for the work that Evangelist Angela Paul is doing with where God has called her, and she is mushrooming that call of God. And Angela, I encourage you, continue to give yourself to the mushrooming. This is just the beginning. It's beginning to bud. It is very important. When it is in full bloom, it produces the fruit, and the fruit carries the seed in itself. Do not abort until it brings forth the abundance that pleases the Father. Right now, remain in the guidance of what the Spirit of the living God is going to speak unto your life to do. Nobody could do this for you, but only God. God have, have planted it in, in your heart. Make sure you remain there. Make sure you remain there. All right? So, Father, I've blessed the root project again. Continue, oh God, as we pray, we water it, that it will meet the masses, almighty Father God. Do this for your servants. Do this for all that you are speaking into their heart. And, Lord, they are willing to launch out now. May they launch out into the deep at the command of your word. Because the harvest is ripe. Laborers are few. I pray that the laborers would now adhere to and present themselves. So, Father, we thank you for doing this in Jesus' name. So, saints of God, friends of God, we have come to the end. It is sad we have come to the end. It is sad. But we got to fulfill what needs to be fulfilled. We have to get you accustomed to what is going to be until all this is released and we're going to run longer. But until then, remember, tomorrow afternoon at 6, be in the spirit, we're going to be in prayer. All right, be in the spirit, we are going to be in prayer tomorrow afternoon. Then come Wednesday at 6 again, is Word Wednesday, be in the spirit. Get ready, be there for prayer, Word Wednesday, coming on up again. And then I believe we're going to have the teams again on Friday with Minister Ricken. They're going to be on. See that you are there. Now, for my young people, I realize many of you pay no interest in what we're setting for you. Huh? Now, remember, that is going to be uh, held against you, not against us. But we have set things in place that your spirit man be edified for this time and you're making no note to see that your spirit man be filled, okay? Now remember, that's on you. But I pray you will change and have a, a, a harder change that will present yourself, give yourself. We are not coming with nothing of the world for you. If you're looking for this kind of wine, jam, and smutty foolishness, we are on holiness, not on righteousness. We are on righteousness, not, not uh, 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 on, on righteousness. So find yourself in the things that please the spirit and not the things that your flesh have clung to in this locking time that not even your parents know about. You're doing stuff in secret, but, but God is going to expose you up, and I want you to turn before this exposure come. Find yourself in the right spirit. That goes for all teenagers, all of you, every single one of you. Find yourself there. Then we're going to meet again this coming Sunday. We're going to be here this coming Sunday again, and know I'm going to be briefing us concerning the reopening. Listen out for the reopening, all right? It's going to be happening, all right? So we want to thank you, all right, for this. They said it's the 12th, right? The 12th is going to be reopening, but I still have to brief because we have to put many things in place. So I pray that you will, you will gird the loins of your mind for action, that when we call you to come out and help and assist, you don't, you don't reply, well, I can't and I can't. Many want to come out. This, this is the time we're coming out to work. Walk. Are you with me? So come join us. We have a lot of work to do. So on behalf of my wife and I, the leadership, the administrative team, the engineers, Wendell, David, listen to me, Prophet Cecil. I want to thank God for all of you. They're not finished with you. We're not finished with you. I ain't finished with you yet. But we still have to do our work. But one thing we can say, the Lord have provoked us to get things in place. And I want to say plus for that, plus for that, plus for that. And there are many more things we're going to get in place because of what the Lord would have in this season and time. So until we meet again, love, love to every single one of you. And know that I'm here for you. Make sure, make your calls. Whoever needs to call is given time. Remember, give, give, give is given time. And we want to thank God even for that. So God's blessing upon your life as you give yourself in Jesus' name. 
Amen and Amen.